one very rare species is flying right next to our minibus. Look at that. I never thought I would be in this town again. I have to say I didn't want to be here. It all started two days ago in Burkina Faso. It should have been a piece of cake. Go to the bus station and take a bus from the capital of Burkina Faso, Ouagadougou, to the city of Fadan Gurma, and the following day take another bus from Fadan Gurma to Benin, the last country of our trip. We successfully found our first bus, but... It wasn't a good day. Um, we're having a bad situation here. We were waiting two hours for the bus to leave because there was some kind of problem with the engine or I, I don't know. But we left Ouagadougou at 4 p.m. It's almost 10 p.m. and we're stuck in the city of... What's the name of the city? In the city of Zorgo. I wouldn't say it's a city, it's, it's a very very small town. I'm having dinner right now. It's just an omelet, plain omelet with bread. They don't have water here. We're here because the bus broke down after one and a half hours of, of driving. The company told us they're going to send another bus from Ouagadougou. I have no idea what will happen right now, but it's 10 p.m. There's still three more hours to go. We don't have an accommodation there, as we were thinking that we would arrive at like 6 p.m. So it's 10 p.m. right now. I'm having dinner in the middle of nowhere. Teresa's here. She's not feeling really well with her stomach. That's also another disadvantage. This is Africa, ladies and gentlemen. This is also the very first time I see the friendly, smiling and kind Burkinabe people swearing, shouting and being nervous. Well, you can't blame them. The bus came, 11 p.m. It's here. <sighs> we also managed to book a hotel thanks to a really nice guy that found the hotel on the internet. We're staying at the quite expensive hotel in Fadan Gurma, but there, there's just no other option. I don't like traveling in Africa at night, it's not very safe, so let's pray. After three hours of unpaved road, we arrived to our expensive hotel. The hotel room was far from good. The next day was even worse. It started pretty well. On our way to Benin. It's 35 degrees Celsius outside, but some of us still feel a little bit cold. We are going through the Pama Reserve, a home to a lot of species of birds. And one very rare species is flying right next to our minibus. Look at that. This little bird can catch and eat 10 small fish in a day. So it's a couple, a very rare sight. When it hangs in the air, it looks like a hummingbird. We just left Burkina Faso, we had our passport stamped without any problems and now we need to go around 15 kilometers to the Benin borders, so we're basically in the area of nobody. I'm really gonna miss the Burkina Bay people, but now it's time for Benin. But then at the Benin border, problems started. Quick change of buses and we are ready to get our visa and our passport stamped. 
Benin, we are coming. No, we were not coming. You see, we didn't have visa to enter Benin, but before you call us stupid, reckless, handsome and ignorant, you should know one very important thing. It was almost impossible to find any information about the Beninese visas on arrival. Apparently some people got them and some didn't. It was possible before, but not now. But it's possible again. Uh, so we decided to get our visa before coming to Benin. But then we met two Spanish tourists in Burkina Faso that said Ha ha ha, we were in Benin last month and we got the visa on arrival. You will get it too. Hasta luego. My girlfriend wrote this on Lonely Planet and apparently there was a Danish girl who also received visa on arrival last year. That assured us that we would get them. We are at the Benin border and we're having probably the biggest trouble since we came to Gambia. I cannot record here, so I'll explain later, but we cannot enter Benin today. I have no idea what the f we're gonna do. We couldn't get to Benin and our visa for Burkina Faso was about to expire that day, so our only chance was to get to Togo. To fully comprehend what is going to happen, you need to look at this map. We are right here, at the border of Burkina Faso and Benin. There is no visa on arrival in Burkina Faso, so we couldn't stay there as we had just exited the country. We also could not enter Benin as the officers claimed that there are no visas on arrival as well. Our only chance was Togo. We didn't know if Togo has visa on arrival. If not, then... The Beninese police officers also claimed that there are, and I quote, special visas that are expensive. We suspected they might have been suggesting a bribe, but rather than paying them, we stopped a truck and left for Burkina Faso. We're in a truck, we're going back to Burkina Faso. Let me explain what happened. About three weeks ago, we met two Spanish tourists. So what we're doing right now is we're getting back to Burkina Faso with some kind of document that they gave us that allows us to, I don't know, cross Burkina Faso for five minutes and we will try to get to Togo. We tried to befriend the driver and his assistant by asking what are you carrying? He didn't respond twice. And the third time when we insisted that he has to answer, he replied white product and then he just went silent um i think we should rather stay quiet from now on too many questions They led us into Burkina Faso again. It seems there will be no problem at the Burkina side of the border. The police officer that's taking care of us is incredibly nice and helpful. And he went to find two motorbikes for us that would take us to the Togolese border. I can't believe a police officer is doing this for us. I'm gonna f miss this country. I can't believe this. We got our motorbikes from the police officer and we are on our way to Togolese borders. I hope this will go only uphill from now on. And so two motorbike drivers took us to the Togolese borders. We arrived at 10 p.m. So we got to this tiny solitary Togolese border. The police officers were already sleeping, but we got our visa there. Togo in another truck isn't exactly the country we plan to be in today but it's better than nothing I never thought that we would end up in Dapong today in the same hotel and in the same room as three weeks ago the internet's not working the water's not running and the receptionist is completely drunk it's good to be back at least I can get a nice haircut tomorrow.
next day we decided to go to the deep south of Togo. The exact same journey we took three weeks before, but this time backwards and in just one day. It took 16 hours, but we made it to the capital, Lome. And since this was our last week in Africa and we didn't have time to apply for the Beninese visa, we tried to get the mysterious visa on arrival one last time. And now listen carefully. I couldn't record any of this because it's illegal to film police officers or stations in Africa. The border officer told us there is no visa on arrival. As we were about to leave in sadness and agony, the head of the station called us into his office and said, there is a way to get to Benin, but it will cost you something. The corrupt officer was openly suggesting a bribe. That got us. We turned the police station upside down. We were shouting, telling people how corrupt these officers were. We were mad. And then in the middle of this chaos, a female officer showed up, took our passports and gave us an envelope which allegedly allowed us to stay in Benin. Victory! Not really. She told us our passports and visas would be ready in the immigration office of the city of Kotonou in two days. And indeed they were ready. But as we were about to pay for the visa, the immigration officer said we had to pay, wait for it, an unofficial fine. He couldn't explain why we needed to pay it, so we got mad again. Chaos, screaming, apocalypse. We left the station without our passports and tried to figure out how to avoid paying the unofficial bribe. I mean, fine. Luckily, a special meal solved our tough situation the next day. Good morning. Very exciting day today. It's our third day in Kotonou, Benin. My girlfriend was getting African braids two days ago and the hairdresser lady invited us for a lunch today. She promised to cook something very, very special and typical for Benin. I'm looking forward. Let's go. On today's menu we have something that uh, surprised us a little bit. It's a delicacy, uh, very popular here in Benin. It's snails, ladies and gentlemen. So they're putting the snails into the boiling water. I hope their death is fast and painless. Opening the snails. So right now they're separating the edible parts from the inedible ones. A very slimy process. Cleaning the snails with a little bit of imagination. It's like calamari or some seafood. Maybe you need a little bit more imagination. Squeezing some lemons there. It's not for the flavor, it's for the cleaning. It's not slimy at all at this moment. That's what we wanted. The snails are cleaned properly and we're gonna marinate them right now. We added the marinade and salt. It smells pretty good to be honest. Again, a lot of oil. I think my first stop in Europe will be the cardiologist. Time for the sauce. Now we're gonna put the rice inside the pot with the sauce. So they put the crushed peppers inside 14 liters of oil again. And now they're making some kind of pepper sauce, I'd say. A little break from cooking. Ah. <laughs> now we're watching a movie from Benin. <laughs> 
So the movie is about two sisters. The younger one poisons the older one to get her husband, but she also dies at the end. Brilliant. I love how these people are excited to show us how they cook, to show us the family photos, to show us a movie. And this is so different from the developed Western world and that's why I love Africa. Such an amazing experience today. This is a feast. Look at that. Two sauces, rice, wow. And of course the snails. Okay, c'est bon. So it's finally time to try these snails from Benin. Bon appétit. <laughs> Very crunchy, but also kind of gummy with bitter aftertaste. Very groundy. I cannot say it's lovely, but it's not bad. Let's say it's not bad. Let's say it's edible. The kind Beninese family thought we really loved the snails, so they insisted we take all the remaining ones. And that's when the idea struck me. The immigration chief was a morbidly obese guy. We had the delicacy, he had our passports. So we took the snails to him and... We're at the immigration office trying to get our visa and passport and they also told us that we should uh, pay some kind of unofficial fine, in other words, a bribe. So we were ready to argue today and we also brought the snails because the chief of the immigration office is a pretty fat guy and we gave him the snails and he accepted, so there's no fine. He accepted the bribe. He's gonna eat the snails. I can't believe this happened right now. The officer ate the snails, gave us our passports, and we were finally free. It was a crazy week. The broken engine, the random trucks, the journey through entire Togo, the bribes, the snails. <sighs> That's the story of how we bribed the police with giant snails.